In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how we can create what's technically known as an invisible button. As opposed to a button where we simply turn the opacity down to zero, this is technically known as an invisible button. I'm in preview mode right now. I've got a very simple one already built here on the stage. And the way you can identify an invisible button when you're in authoring mode is it does appear as this aqua colored blue. And that's how you, that's how you can recognize it. Now if I highlight that, it's already a button as you can see in my properties here. Uh, I'm just going to double click it and sort of walk through how it's built and then we'll build another one. Now, as you recall in the buttons, we have four unique states, up, over, down, and hit. And you'll also recognize in the timeline, the lighter versions indicate that there's actually something in that particular frame, as opposed to here where you can see hello, and here you can see the hit state. Anywhere you see where it's darker gray with, I'll say an empty circle means there's no items on the stage in those particular frames. Okay. So to make it an invisible button, technically speaking, I'll just clarify that now, there must be nothing in the up state and there must be something in the hit state. The other two states I'll say are optional, but as long as nothing is in the up state and something is in the hit state, when you go back outside of that timeline, it will be represented by that light blue aqua color. Okay, so now that's very helpful because that shows you the hit state uh, when you're in authoring mode and it sure can help you, you know, in your design and so on. You don't have to guess where the hit state is. But when you play it, again, I'll hit uh, my keyboard command for play. You don't see it on the stage, but it is down there, and I can prove it because when I get close, it responds. All right, so here we're just creating like a little pop-up feature just to show you, you know, some of the, I don't know if it's advanced, but some creative ways of using buttons here, if you will. Okay, so I will build one of these from scratch, so let me just start a new file. Okay, and I'll just keep it a standard size. Uh, action script, yes, for now. Hardly matters, but we'll keep it on the defaults here. And I'll do a save as immediately. And I'll throw this on my desktop as well. Actually, I do have a folder called Animate Course. I'll throw it in there. I'll just call this invisible underscore button. Okay, click Save. And let's start from the start. So I'll just go to my oval tool. I currently have red as a fill and black as a stroke. I'm going to turn my stroke to a none, which is this little button right here. Okay, so I just have the red fill. All right, so with my oval tool, I'm going to create a big circle here. And I'll hold my shift key down to constrain it as a full circle. I'll make it quite large, but that big. And then I want to convert that into a button. So with my selection tool, I'll go and highlight it. Modify, convert the symbol. Button, yes. And I'll call this Invisible Button. That's the name that you will see in the library. Click OK. And you can see by the marquee that it is a symbol. And in order to get into that timeline, once again, we do need to double click it. And we'll see it's button timeline below here. So I'll double click it now to access its timeline and there we go. And what I propose to do is to put the word hello up here to appear under the overstate. And just to make things very clear for myself, I'm going to put that on another layer. Alright, so I'll start by just creating the new layer. We'll make this invisible as a second step. And then I'm going to go over to my overstate, keyframe it, F6 on the keyboard. Now you don't see the little circle anymore because it's no long, it's not in the overstate, it's keyframed in the upstate. So right now I'm just going to go to my text tool and up at the top here I'm just going to insert the word hello. You can style the font and so on as much as you like. Just make sure you can see it. And I'm just going to make this regular. And why don't we go with it? Arial or something. In fact, you can short, when you're in that menu, you can hit the first letter and it will pop to your letters. Anyway, that's a long run just to look for Arial. 
Okay, finally. Ariel. So there we go, and I can move that wherever I want. I'm going to put it at the top here, you know, distinctly far from the button hit state. So to complete the thought, I just have to drag the contents of the up state over to the hit state. So usually I select it once. Let me just deselect to example that again. Select it once, then click it and drag it to the hit state. Therefore, it's being moved to the other state and not duplicated. You can see the little empty circle there indicating that it's no longer in the up, over, nor down state, but only in the hit state. Now, if I go back up to scene one here, it should be represented by that light blue color telling me that technically it's an invisible button. And there you have it. So I think this is done, but let's just go back in here and double check here. So when I mouse over this guy, we should see the word hello appear at the top. Okay, and again, the, the hit, the trigger, is this section down here. It will be invisible, I'll just remind you, so you'll have to kind of find it. Unless you're sort of slicing out a shape of something in a background illustration, perhaps, um, the button will still be invisible, but the impression will be that it will be isolated to that particular shape, if that makes sense. All right, so let's just run this movie here, test movie. And again, you don't see anything, but when I get close to where that hit state is, bada bing, there we go. Okay, so that's how we create a technical hidden or invisible button. Not to be confused with a button but that's been, had its opacity reduced to zero, which can work the same way, but you don't have the advantage of that light blue color showing you the actual shape of the hit state when you're in author mode. Okay, so I'd like you to try this as well. And that's how we create an invisible button. Okay, so if I go back up to scene one, again, there is that shape. Now, because I move this, the word hello is going to relatively move as well. So we'll do a quick test movie on the keyboard here. And there you go. Once again, that is, technically speaking, what we call an invisible button.